Mr. Metcalf, how are you? Hello, Matt, how are you doing? Oh, fantastic. Did you get your knife yet? Not yet, not yet, but I was calling. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, once I, they say I'm supposed to receive it today. So, reason why I'm calling, because I'm not the professional. I just love the knife. So, if you don't mind, is, is it all right for me to record you? Because I'm going to use some of this audio for the video. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, only thing I want to know, can you tell me something about the process of how you make, uh, well, specifically my knife, which is the uh, boot buoy, and like the metals, the time frame, I mean, just whatever, if anybody was interested, they they would know, you know, and the professionalism, like what, what it takes to, you know, to make the knife. Yeah, you're looking for kind of a Reader's Digest uh, build synopsis. Is that what you're kind of digging? For? I, guess, I guess. I guess. You know, like I can't. I can't discuss like, oh, this type of metal was used and it was grind. You know, because <laughs> because I don't know. Yeah. Know. Yeah, I, I, I can give you a, a quick read on that. Okay. Uh, so basically, the majority of our knives we use CPM 154. Um, it's a crucible powdered steel. It's a, a stainless alloy. But it is, in my opinion, one of the best values for the dollar when it comes to strength, toughness, edge holding, and corrosion resistance. Okay. Um, and, and so there are steels that are marginally higher in value in any one of those categories, but very few of them can even be noticed by standard use by a human being. It's more something that a machine would be able to measure beyond a certain point. So that's, that's why we use that steel in particular. It's very easy to machine. Um, and it leaves a fine finish, which I appreciate in the manufacturing process. Uh, okay. And the boot bowies, which I pronounce incorrectly, you actually pronounce it right by boot buoy. I just can't <laughs> seem to get my mouth to make that sound every time I say that word. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, the boot bowies themselves, they they start off as about a six foot bar of steel, and I chop it down to length. Uh, I trace the pattern on it, and I grind away everything that isn't the profile. After that, I put it on a hydraulic surface grinder where I bring it down to a specified thickness. In your case, it was uh, 0.1875, so 187 and a half thousandths, um, which is 3 sixteenths thick. Okay. Um, at, at that point, I cut the guard material to length, and I run an end mill, 3 sixteenths in diameter, to create the slot. Okay. And uh, I, I fit the guard to the knife, cross drill the guard onto the blank, and uh, then I take everything apart, clean it, and wrap it in foil and heat treat it. Um, our heat treat process is proprietary, but it yields uh, about a 60 plus or minus one on the Rockwell C scale, which we find to be the best balance for this steel in particular. Um, and then after that, I lay out the lines. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I prep the blade by uh, removing any scale that formed during the heat treat process or uh, surface grinder marks that were left when we flattened it. Um, so I, I prep the blade to give it a nice satin finish, and then I lay out my bevel lines. I lay out a center line where I want the, the bevel to end. So that's the height and the thickness, basically, the terminal thickness of that bevel. And then uh, put the steel to the wheel, as we like to say, and, and hand grind it. And we don't use any jigs or fixtures, uh, mostly because I was too lazy to learn how to use them, and I it was easier <laughs> for me to get good at freehand grinding. Okay. Um, and, so, uh, yeah, so then I grind the bevels in, bring them up to a finish that I like, uh, and then we move to soldering, at which point we clean the guard. Um, I pre-radius kind of the finger choil area of the guard before mounting it, and uh, then we drive some 330 seconds brass pinstock through the tang and the guard, peen it over, and then apply some flux and solder the joint and clean it up. Okay. Um, somewhere in there, I tapered the tang. That's usually before I do any bevels whatsoever, and that's all done by hand on the platen of the uh, grinder. Okay, okay. But also, too, I want to let people know that I was one of your first customers. I want people to know that, you know, so... <laughs> Not that it means anything. We want anyway. people to know that, too. In <laughs> fact, you know, anytime somebody's in the shop while I was working on your knife, we're like, no, this guy has been with us since the beginning. I think you yeah. have a fang, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And do you know, I also have the original paperwork, everything you gave, the warranty, everything on there, which I'm going to also show, too, in, uh, you know. In oh, there, that's so. awesome. Yeah. So, once again, you know, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to I'm just waiting around, like, man, waiting for the UPS to get here. You know, it's just like, so hopefully sooner 
and then later, and then I'll take care of it. And then one of these days, if I can get down to your shop, I would love, I know you're busy, if I could just get a tour and just see, and you know, maybe I can order me another knife. <laughs> maybe, hopefully. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jenna said you've been threatening to come by and visit, so yeah. doors open, you're welcome anytime. We'd love to have you up here. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I, once again, I appreciate your time, too. No problem. Thanks so much for sticking with us, and I really, really hope you enjoy the night. Oh, I will. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. <laughs> All right, we'll dude. <laughs> All right, dude. Thank you very much. Thanks, Walter. I'll okay. talk to you later. Bye-bye. There you go, YouTube. Vehement knives. Rare. It's very rare that you're able to speak to the owner of a company that made your knife. All right? I have that privilege. And I consider it an honor. So, as soon as this knife gets here, guess what? I'm going to show it to you. I'm not going to go over the technical stuff because there's no need to because guess what? Matt just did. So, but I'm going to give my take on it and what I like about it. Because I believe I'm a type of person I can look at something I can see quality. And I know there's quality to be in this knife. Not only just the knife, but the uh, sheath that was also custom made specifically for this boot buoy. So until then, hang tight. And here we are. It's time for the box opening from Vehement Knives. So here we go. As I stated before, I'm going to use my first knife that I got from Vehement to open this. It's only fitting, you know? It's only fitting. And also, too, one of the reasons I got this, the first one, I like knives on that um, Tanto style, you know? To me, it's a strong looking blade, you know? Okay. Don't you hate when people take a long time to open boxes? It's like on Christmas, you know, and you open up gifts and you get that one person. They just take forever to open a box. You're like, man, just rip that sucker open. But one of the reasons that I won't do that is because I like to retain the boxes, the original boxes that I, you know, get different things in. That's why I do it. So. So, try not to be impatient. So, I'm going to put this back in this sheath and get this out the way because it's not about this blade. It's about this blade. Oh, look at the packaging. Okay, come on. Listen. Let's, let's get into this. <clears throat> okay. And not to compare when I first got my first page, but, you know, because it's not about that. Let me see. Make sure everything is out of here. But look at this. And somebody may say, man, all that is is, you know, a stamp. Okay, yeah, that's true. It's just a stamp. I got a code on here, too. I'm going to have to scan that later and see what that says. Uh, and see what it does, should I say. But here you go. Vehement knives. You know, if you are into knives, I vehemently think you should look into this company. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, skin bender. Ooh, okay, okay. Looking kind of sexy here. This is the sheath. Okay. You know what? I see the blade in here, but let's open this up. <laughs> let's see what we got here. Look at this. You know, I hope you can see this. I specifically asked for the blue stitching. The blue stitching. And as you can see, this is leather. 
and it could be worn either vertically from a belt loop make sure I get this in here vertically from a belt loop or horizontally off the belt hopefully you can see that look at that look at that and we got the logo also on the sheath custom custom what else do we have in here we have a sticker USA baby look at that yes put that to the side what else look at that another sticker put that to the side prepare perform prevail so we get a warranty we still get the warranty letter. Still get the warranty letter. It's nice. Okay. I'm gonna assume this is uh, on February the 3rd. The blade was used to cut this. Then we have um, the date, February the 3rd, presented to me. You don't need to know my real name. It's Choker. <laughs> That's my name. YouTube. My name's Choker. The model, Taper Tang Boot Buoy. Serial number 004. Blade material CPN 154. Sheath black and blue cub style leather. Uh... Handle material, black, micarta, blue, liner, mosaic pins. Yes. There we go. All right. Jenna, who I spoke to, thank you for all your help. She made the leather uh, sheath. Skin Bender. So that's the name of that company, Skin Bender. And Matt. And here's his information. So if you want to give him a call, give him a call. All right, and here we go. We got the boot buoy. Oh man, look at that handle. Look at that handle. And honestly, perfect size. I hope you guys can see this. Even the pins that are in this handle. One of these days I might get another lens where I can get a really good close up where you can see it. And we got the blade. There we go. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. My boot buoy. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me make sure. Uh-uh. Gotta be careful. It's very sharp. Very sharp. We got the maker's mark here. And I do notice a difference in the maker mark than on the first one. Very nice. Can you see that? Right there. There you go. All right. I put it in the sheath. And let me tell you something. This leather smells so good. I mean, so good. If you ever bought a pair of Lou Casey's boots, let me tell you something, it smells just like that. I mean, this leather smells good. So, um, the retaining strap uh, to keep the blade in, you ha I really had to stretch it. So, with anything with leather, you got to stretch it a little bit to get it to work. All right, so I got to play with that. 
you know then we got the belt loops and like I said uh, it can be either worn vertically on the side but honestly I'll probably wear it horizontally Horiz horizontally <laughs> horizontal uh, that's probably how I'm gonna wear it because it's more concealable this way more concealable you know um, I always say you don't you don't want to telegraph anything no one should know what you have on or why you have it on, to be honest with you. But anyway, so um, very nice, very nice. Perfect size, perfect size. So let me take it out here. Okay, like I said, I had to stretch the leather. And like I said, once again, looking at the uh, handle. Very nice handle. Very nice grip. Even the belly of this handle. It's really not a belly of the handle. I mean, I guess it is, but it's not one that's pronounced, which is fine. Um, this blade here, this blade is sharp. I don't even want to play around with that. So, here, here you guys go. You two. This is my vehement boot buoy. I hope you uh, enjoyed this as much as I'm going to enjoy it. And honestly, sometimes these knives are so nice. You know, I really, I really don't want to carry them. I just kind of want to put them in a case. <laughs> put them in a case and just look at them. I know they may sound a little weird, but I get into stuff like this. So, listen. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And uh, if you care to see any more blades, let me know. Because I actually do have some more blades that um, I haven't reviewed. And um, there you go. And if interested, the information uh, for Vietnam Knives uh, will be also put in the description. And uh, there you go. So, as always, be blessed and not stressed. YouTube, I thought my review was over with, but I just noticed one other thing with this blade. If you look at the stitching on the sheath, which is a blue, I call it like a royal blue, it matches the inlay of the handle. Inside the handle, uh, right against the blade, is the same color blue. I'll put the pictures in there. You guys be blessed once again and not stressed. Later.